Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and I am so glad you came to this video where I'm going to show you a whole new world of CNC routers that most people don't even realize exists. I'm going to teach you how to engrave on glass. Now if you didn't know, you can engrave on glass, metal, acrylic, make amazing designs with a CNC router. I'm going to walk you through the entire process of setting a project up on glass how to mount it up on your CNC router, what tool you need to use, and we get to watch this amazing project come to life right before your very eyes. And at the very end, I'm gonna show you a super unique project that you cannot do when you're engraving wood, that you can only do in this technique. Now the project we're gonna be doing is an eagle. So to do this project the right way, in a way that's gonna be really cool to watch this thing come to life, Here's what you need. A pane of glass, some black construction paper that you can buy from Walmart for 25 cents for a nice big sheet. A lamp, yes, a lamp without the shade, and you want an LED bulb. An engraving bit, which I am gonna to talk to you about this bit in this video. So you have all the knowledge you need about what exactly you need to get. And, of course, you want a CNC router. Now this particular unit is a Bob CNC Evolution 4 router and it does beautiful for the job we're going to do as you will find out in just a moment. So let's start diving into this CNC glass etching project on a CNC router. By the time we're done, you are going to know something most CNCers don't know and watch at the very end to see the other project I'm going to show you that will blow you away. All right, let's dive on in. This is the project we're going to be engraving on glass, this eagle that I designed up in Vectric V-Carve. Now, it doesn't look that great in this image here, but wait till you see what this looks like on glass. So let's head over to the router, start setting things up, and I'm going to walk you through everything step by step. Now, the first thing you want to do is take off your dust shoe if you have one. It'll just be in the way. This particular dust shoe I designed up specifically for the Makita router. You see inside it's got a base there, like a plate. It's made to prevent the down blast from the Makita router from blowing down on your project. And it redirects the air upward, so you don't get sawdust everywhere. And this is it. If you are interested in this design, put a comment down below and I'll finish designing it up and get it available to you. So you want to obviously clean up your machine very well and clean up the glass. Now we are going to be watching this project come to life in a, a very unique way. So get that glass really, really clean, both sides. Windex goes a long way, doesn't it? Now that your glass is nice and clean, we are going to cut the black backing board. And that's what the black paper is for from Walmart. What we're going to do is put our glass right on top and with a razor blade or whatever sharp knife that you want to use you're going to cut out the paper now you're going to use this for two reasons one is you'll be able to see the project much better as it's coming to life and you can use it as a backing in your project when you have your end result. Now the extra paper you will want to keep around because you will be using it during the operation and I'll show you that in just a moment. So I want you to take a look at my router bed. You can see there's a grid on there. If you don't have a grid on your router you will absolutely want one and if you have a Bob's E4 CNC router you can get a program on my Etsy store. The link is down below. A grid allows you to set up your part at very specific locations that is oriented based on the machine movement. The tool will come around based on your program and cut this grid to exactly what you want. Now this grid is two inches by two inches. Now here's the benefit of having a grid. There's two of them. The first is when you put your project down, it is in alignment with the machine. The second reason is the point or intersection of every grid is a known location. You will know exactly where it is. So each one of my grids is two inches uh, long. 
So in this case where I've placed this in the Y direction, it's three points over, so that's six inches over. In the X direction, it's one point over, or one grid point, so it's one inch. With the machine at the home position, which is what I am at right now, where everything, and I've made everything zero, we're ready to go. And we're gonna set the machine in just a little bit. So we're gonna place our project on the grid along a line and we're gonna put the rear left corner at a grid intersection. And then we're gonna clamp the glass down. Now I want you to see, I've got three clamps down. They're just holding the edge of the glass. Now something with the clamping of the glass, you don't want your clamps tight. In fact, you wanna be able to move them just like this. It's snug, but it's not tight. It's enough just to keep the glass in place. The drag bit is going to just drag. So we're going to loosen this one up because it's too tight. But there's the drag bit will not have any side pressure on it. So it's not going to move the glass. So this is exactly what you want with your clamps. Now that you're all set up, <coughs> comes to the bit. And what we're going to use is a Widget Works diamond drag bit. This is a very good tool. There's a link down in the description. I'll talk to you more about it in a little bit, but I want you to see the point of it. You see that little shiny spot? That is the diamond. I think I should turn it into an engagement ring. Now this one is a 120 degree angle on the diamond. Now I don't like to use 120 degree anymore. I strongly recommend the 90 degree diamond tip. If you get this tool, you will also want to get the this 90 degree tip. It's sold separately, but it does much finer detail work than the 120 does. So we're going to change it out. And the way you do that is just unscrew the body of the engraving tool. Be careful because there's a spring inside. And just slip the engraver out. That's it. So when it wears out, you just replace it that way as well. But we're going to put the 90 degree in Again, I strongly recommend a 90 degree. And you just slide it back into the housing. Now you just see there's a little stop on the end of it. That sets the length of your tool. And just make sure we've got the 90 degree tip in. And we do. We are ready to go. Put it back together. Grab the housing. Just double check, make sure the spring is in there. The spring is the lifeblood of this tool. You can get different tension springs from which it works as well. So simply just reassemble it. What I'll do is I'll take a pair of pliers and lightly squeeze it and just give it a little tug so it doesn't loosen up. And there it is. So this tool is the best one I've seen, I've seen a couple on Amazon that didn't get good ratings, but the way this works is that spring loading gives a lot of flexibility. You can see on the glass, you want this movement so it doesn't break the glass. With the glass specifically though, we're only gonna move the tip just a little bit. So it's very light pressure that can be applied. Now I just want you to know Widget Works. This tool is used by General Motors, Campbell Soup, and NASA, so we are working with rocket science. This is a high-end tool. Um, yeah, I just like that idea. Aerospace grade. So what you want to do is make sure your uh, router lock nut is cleaned up. I'll just take an old toothbrush and get the dust out of it, because that dust in your equipment can throw off the, the bits. So clean them both up, blow them off, reassemble. I do like the Makita router. Now when you put the engraver in, you want to make sure that it is butted all the way up against the nut. You can see it's a long tool, but because we are not putting much pressure on the project at all, it doesn't really matter. This is a quarter inch <coughs> diameter shank. There is a half inch diameter shank as well. Now on this you do not turn the power on to the router <laughs> that makes it really nice it's quiet but do not put the uh, turn the router on so now you just set 
the tip of the tool as you would any other router bit. Bring it down to the surface using a piece of paper and what I do as soon as the paper gets bound I'll just tap it down one more. I always move it down 0 0.005 at a time in inches. Send your machine home and now we can see where we're at in our grid. I am three up in the X direction and zero on the Y so all I need to do is move the X direction up six inches. Now I gotta make sure my controller is working in inches. You see the G21 there, that's a G code that's telling the machine it's gonna be working in millimeters. So we have to switch that over to what's called a G20. So we're gonna put in a G0 to tell it to go rapid. And then the G20 tells us it's gonna be going in inches. And then I go X, six, and when I hit enter, it's gonna wrap it up and the tip of the engraver is right at the corner of the glass. And all we have to do is reset our home on the X position. And we're ready to go. So, this is where that other piece of construction paper comes in handy. You see, we want to watch what we're doing. So, you'll take it right up to the edge of the glass and tape it down. And the lamp goes in behind it with the LED bulb. So the light will be shining through the glass. So you can watch the engraving going on. And you see we've got light coming through. And as the tool runs around the glass, you are going to see it being created. So we're going to load up the Eagle program. And remember, I'm going to show you an amazing program at the end of this that you can only do in this style again you'll be blown away so we have the eagle in there you can see it's turned sideways that's so I have it oriented for this video and we turn our lights off so we can see our project and we're just getting rid of any other glare light that's coming from the backlight that's in there so we can get a good look at this and we are ready to go so shut off all the lights and I was having a little bit of a focusing problem here but isn't this cool where you just start to watch this thing develop and you can't even see it but of course that's the focusing I had to play around with the lights a little bit but finally I got it set up now I chose an eagle because an eagle stands for strength freedom creativity freedom in thinking and creativity now I've got this up at four times speed But isn't it neat to see a diamond engraving thing start to develop like this? And the last is the eye of the eagle. You can see the fine movements. And that's it. Isn't this an amazing project? And the thing that really gets you is the detail that you can get out of an engraver. And this is extremely loose detail. And look at the claws and how things just jump out at you with the lighting. This file is available to anybody who fills out that survey as long as you have a CNC router. Again the link is down below. So now I'm going to show you this other amazing project after you get another little eyeball on this. Very nice. There's a link to all this stuff down below. I strongly suggest you get into the engraving. Now we are getting into this project that you won't believe what it is. So I am actually not using the through lighting at this point, but I will at the end because I really want to surprise you to see if you can guess what this is. If you're a woman, you can probably start to figure this out pretty quickly. But this is ultimate creativity. Now, of course, I sped things up quite a bit for the sake of time. But look at the detail on this. These are eighth inch letters. All designed through Vector V Carve and using the Widget Works engraving tool. 
This one was done with a 120 degree bit and I wish I had had the 90 degree bit. But look at what we have. You can't carve this in wood. And that, my CNC brothers and sisters, is what engraving is all about. It is my favorite thing to do with a CNC router. I hope this video was helpful and gave you some new ideas that you can do with a CNC. The links for everything is down below. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it, and I'd love to see a comment from you as well. What can you do with your engraving? What kind of ideas are coming to your mind? Hey, this is Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, and I will talk to you next time.